Hello, students. Can you hear me? Yes. Good evening, Mar Marlene. So um, we are going to start. Hello, everyone. We are going to start with our second class with me. Okay. Today we are going to continue talking about speaking. All right. But in today's presentation, um, we are going to learn some techniques that you can use, especially when you go to the second part of the speaking stage, that is while speaking stage. Good evening, Roxana. So are you ready to start with the class for today? Because there are many things to do today, all right? So remember that the objective is not to give you a lot of definitions. Here the objective is to give you uh, different cases and we and together we can find some possible solutions. All right? So we are going to start with our class for today. And as I told you, uh, the class that we are going to have today is about while speaking stage. Okay? So let's see. Uh, yesterday we were talking about the, the activities that you can do previously, right? So as a part of motivation before introducing a new topic. But today uh, we are going to learn techniques, okay, that you can use maybe after you present the topic or during the time you are presenting the topic, okay? So the first technique that you can use in your classes, I mean, when you are going to develop speaking activities, is the technique that is called drilling. So, have you ever heard about drilling? Do you have any idea what drilling is? Do you know what drilling is, students? Do you have any ideas about that? No ideas about drilling? Any word that comes to your mind? No? Okay, Flor, no problem. So here let me show you what drilling is. So as you can read the information that is next to me, here it says, it is a technique that means listening to a model provided by the teacher or a tape or another student and repeating what is heard. In other words, drilling means repetition. Something that it was shown before and you have to do the same. For example, maybe one of the, there are different kinds of drillings, but one of the most common is repetition drill. So, for example, in repetition drill, the teacher is going to repeat a phrase so the teacher will ask students to repeat after him or her. So that is a repetition drill, for example. So here in the next one says, this is a repetition drill, a technique that is still used by many teachers when introducing new language items to their students. For example, if you want to put emphasis to, you want to put emphasis on some expressions that the students need to know for that lesson, so you can maybe ask the students to repeat those expressions, okay? So in that case, you are making the students repeat, right? That's drilling, okay? When the students do something that you teach or that you have taught them before, that's drill. You have a model. You know how to do it because you taught them before, all right? And remember that for drillings, of course, you have to be the model first. You have to teach them something, and then they will be able to do the same, but using the same structure, okay? In this case, we are talking about speaking, right? So to clarify maybe any doubts, let's go to the next um, page or the next slice. So I'm going to show you now. Yeah, maybe, yes, Erica, you have, re remember that depending, but because we have different kind of drills. Today I will show you that. But for example, yeah, for example, let, let me tell you an example. If you want to present a new topic, okay, and maybe before starting with 
you know, maybe introducing the new phrases. So you can all maybe when they are listening a conversation, so after they listen to the conversation, you can ask the students to repeat maybe the most important phrases that the conversation has. So in this case, they have to repeat after you because maybe they make mistakes in pronunciation. So in reals, you need to teach them before they do it because maybe they will, they will not know how to do it if you never teach them, right? So it's very important to teach them before they do it, all right? It is very important, it is necessary, all right? You will see that in the following examples. Let's start with the first kind of drills that we have today here for our class. So drills with call and response. So when you say call, it means that everybody is going to repeat at the same time, of course, after the teacher, right? For example, here, here it says, Drills aim at getting learners to practice using the patterns that occur in language. For example, children or students listen and repeat the sentences spoken by the teacher. So the teacher will say, this is a yellow dress. So the students are going to repeat after the teacher. This is a yellow dress. Because they have to do the same thing as the teacher does, right? Then the teacher will say, this is a blue dress. So the students together, as a chorus, they will say, this is a blue dress. This is a kind of drills with color response because everybody is going to repeat the same thing after the teacher. This is one kind of drills, okay? Do you have any questions about the first drill shown today? Any questions? Erika? Do you have any questions, Flor, Celso, Ana, Javier, Jose Luis, Lidia, Lucia, Roxana, do you have any questions about the first drill? This is one of the, okay, this is one of the most common drills that we usually use with our students, right? You mention a phrase and you make the student repeat after you. In that case, you are using drillings, but with choral response, yes? Okay. So if we go to the next, when you use this activity, remember, okay, that's a good question, Roxana. So we are talking about speaking. So if you want to make your students speak, you have to model them how to pronounce the phrases or the words. So this is a good way to make them uh, familiarize with the pronunciation, with the correct intonation of the word. Especially when you are, maybe, when you want to put emphasis on questions, okay, something like that. So you can use these activities. But remember that drills are really important for the speaking activities. This is what we are doing today. Yeah, Roxana? Okay, so in the next one, we have other types of drilling. Another way is open pair drilling. For example, here it says, student one says, have you ever been to Paris? So a student four will say, yes, I have. Student five is going to continue. Have you ever been to New York? Hello, Rosa. And a student two will say, no, I haven't. So in this case, you are making the students, okay? One student is, is going to, or oh, is asking a question, but remember that they are, that, that they have the same model, but they are changing just the place, right? As you can see, to Paris and to, to New York. And the answers are going to be different. Maybe you will say, one student is going to say, yes, I have, or the other one will say, no, I haven't, right? That, in that case, that is an open pair drilling, okay? Because it's open because they will uh, choose a place and, that, and the answer is different, okay? It's not just one answer. You can say yes or maybe you can say no, right? So on the other hand, we have another kind of drilling that is called substitution drilling. So substitution drilling, students, is when you have, a, you know, a pattern, 
but you need to make only some changes, okay? For example, here, T means teacher, double S student, okay? So the teacher is saying, X on the corner. The students say, X on the corner. Next, the teacher says, on the table. So something is missing. So the students are going to say, X on the, on the table. Then the teacher will say, under the chair. So the students are going to say, X under the chair. So in this case, they have to substitute something. They have to use, in this case, X in the students' answers, as you can see. Right? So do you have any questions about open pair drilling and substitution drilling? Open pair means the answer can be different. Substitution means that you have a phrase and you have to follow the same structure. Maybe just changing something or by adding something. Okay? So, any questions about open pair or substitution drilling? No questions? No questions, students? Remember that in this case, drillings means repetition. So you make students repeat. Okay? Well, so I think you don't have any questions about this part. So let's go to the next. Of course, Flor. Remember that open pair drilling. Open means that you feel free to answer. You will say yes or you will say no. And of course, because it's open, because you can change also the, the places, as you can see here in the question. For example, the teacher says, have you ever been to Paris? Okay, or have you ever been to Venezuela? So one student is going to say, maybe yes, I have, or no, I have. So the next student is going to ask the question, right? So they have to continue with the same structure. The structure is, have you ever been, right? But you need to change the place in this case. So you say, have you ever been to the United States? And the next student is not going to say yes, always. Maybe the student is going to say no, because this is up to the student. Maybe the student has traveled abroad before. So maybe the student will say, yes, I have. Or maybe the student will say, no, I haven't. Okay? And you continue doing the same thing. But remember that the answers are different because it's open. Okay? You can say yes or you can say no. Right? Any other questions? Is that clear to you, Flor? No problem, Flor. Very nice. So, no more questions about this kind of trainings. So if you don't have any questions now, let's go, please, <clears throat> to the next one of, we have more kinds, okay, of drillings. In this case, we have the repetition drilling. This is something that I told you before. Is when you ask students, sorry, Erica, what does 33.3 plus 6 means. I don't understand. Okay, no problem. So let's continue with repetition drilling. As I said before, this is an activity that most of us do in class when you have some, maybe some sentences or some questions and some expressions and we want our students to repeat after us in order to check or in order to improve their pronunciation, right? So as, as it says here, students are asked to repeat the teacher's models, okay, as accurately and as quickly as possible. This drill is often used to teach the lines of the dialogue. You present a dialogue and maybe they will listen to that 
and then you will ask the students to repeat after you or maybe after the after the person uh, in the audio so the students are going to repeat in order to check the pronunciation right so that is repetition real in that case the students don't change anything they just repeat exactly what they heard okay that's the difference so on the other hand we have change real so as, as its name says chain so a chain reel gets its name from the chain of conversation that forms around the room as the students one by one okay no problem erica so the teacher begins the chain by greeting a particular student or asking him a question the student responds then turns to the student sitting next to him the first student reads or asks a question of the second student and the chain continues. Okay? I'm going to give you an example. Here, here there is an example. A student, say, a student one says, where is the cat? So a student two says, the cat is under the table. Right? So then, what, what you can say here? So a student one is going to sit down and a student two is going to continue with the chain. So you will say, where is the, maybe, where is the dog? So the next student is going to say, the dog is maybe next to the table. And then a student two is going to sit down and a student three is going to continue to a student four. And so that is chain when you go from one to another place, okay? And everybody participates in that part, all right? So do you have any questions about this part about chain real or repetition real? We usually use repetition real almost always, right? Okay, do you have any other questions about this part? No questions? Is that clear to you? All right. So if you don't have any other question, let's go with the next kind of drills that I'm showing to you. I'm showing tonight. So the, here, that is expansion drill. So, okay, there is a question here from Erica. In some substitution drill, are students free to answer to? Okay, remember that in substitution drill, Erica, they have to follow a structure, okay, a pattern, but the students can make only some changes but they are not able to change everything maybe they can change maybe a place they can change maybe a verb they can change the time but they have to continue with the same structure of the conversation okay so that's the big difference this okay flor esther muñoz says the students doesn't repeat the question right okay what do you mean flor in where? Roxana Chavez says, in a student of first grade, is correct translate to Spanish? So sometimes you know that Spanish is necessary, especially when you start teaching them, when they are maybe in the first grade. But it's up to you. Okay. Okay, Flor, one moment. Let me answer the question, that Roxana's question, and then I will answer your question. Okay, Flor? So, Roxana, as I told you, it's up to the teacher. Sometimes it's necessary to use Spanish in class when there are difficult words that maybe they need to be translated. But it depends on the teacher how you can teach them. For example, when I usually teach my students, okay, maybe they are in basic level or they are in the first grade, so I usually teach them the questions that maybe they can ask me to translate something into Spanish, for example. Maybe they will say, teacher, how do you say uh, puedo ir al baño in English? Or teacher, how do you say she works in the hospital in Spanish? 
So if you teach them in that way, they are using English, all right? Even though you translate the phrase that they want in Spanish, but they are still asking you in English. So that's a good activity, right? So for floor, okay, in chain, um, the students doesn't repeat the question. Okay, not always because you remember that one student, the student is going to answer a question, the previous question, and the student is going to be able to ask another question. Okay, for example, I am the student A and say, and maybe I will say, do you like mathematics? So that's a student one. So a student B maybe is going to say, no, I don't, for example, right? And then the student is going to continue. Do you like tennis or do you like English and tennis? So the next student is going to say, yes, I do. And the next student is going to continue with the question. All right? You don't repeat the same question. Maybe you can include something else. All right? But everybody is participating, answering and asking questions at the same time. Yes, Flor? Yes, Roxana? Yes, Erica? Do you feel satisfied with the answers? Okay, very good. So, I, as I was telling you before, the next uh, kind of drill that I have today here to show you, that is expansion drill. For example, here you see, it says, teacher, my mother is a doctor. So the students are going to repeat the same. My mother is a doctor. Then the teacher is going to say, she works in the hospital. So then the students are going to say, she works in the hospital. But now the teacher is going to put two sentences together. For example, here, my mother is a doctor. She works in the hospital. And the students are going to do the same, right? So my mother is a doctor. She works in the hospital. Then the teacher, she takes care. Sorry, she takes care. She takes care of the patient. So there is a mistake there of the spelling. So the students are going to say she takes care of the patient, right? Then the teacher is going to say my mother is a doctor. She works in the hospital and she takes care of the patient. So the students are going to continue. Special means that little by little you are making the sentence or you are making or you are putting different sentences together. So it means that you are making a students uh, think, all right, and pay attention to what you are saying, right? This is expansion well. Little by little they are including more and more words or phrases. So the next one, this is another very interesting drill that is transformation drill. So transformation drill is, you know, is different because here uh, the students have to transform the sentence. For example, if you have positive, maybe they have to use negative. So that's transformation because it's not the same. All right? Here you have an example of transform transformation drill. Teacher, I clean the house. And the students are going to say, maybe I don't clean the house. In this case, the students are using transformation drill because they are using the negative part. Okay? So another example. Here, she, the teacher says, she sings a song. And the students say, she doesn't sing a song. So they are using transformation drill because they are using the opposite sign. They are using negative instead of positive. Okay? That's not repetition because repetition means when you repeat the same words. But here the students are transforming the sentences into negative. Okay? So that's all about drills. So if you have any questions about drills, please, I want you to ask me now. If there is something that you don't understand or maybe you have any doubt, please type 
fit now. Okay, in this case, for example, yeah, transformation reels, if you ask, yes, if you ask the students to tell you the answer, it can be choral, but remember that choral repetition, uh, it means that the students are going to repeat exactly what you will say. But in this case, the students are not repeating exactly what you, what you are saying. They are transforming the sentence that you said into negative. Okay? But transformation really can be used individually as well. Maybe you can ask one by one. So you can ask one student. So you will say something in positive, and the student, one student is going to tell you negative. Right? And then you can ask the next student and so on. But sometimes it takes a lot of time if you ask one by one. So in this kind of activities, in this kind of drills, so it's better to do it chorally instead of individually because of the number of students we have in a, in a school, you know? Okay. Very good, Erica. Does anyone have any other question, please? No? Okay, so if you don't have any questions about reels, let's go to an example of reading activities. Okay, here you have a case. So here it says, Marixa, who is an English teacher, wants to, wants to plan a speaking lesson called Choosing the Best Place for Vacation. Right? So in her while speaking stage, remember today we are studying while speaking stage. This is not a previous speaking stage. Here you are developing the activity. The speaking activity, okay, is the second part of the class. It's not the motivation part. It's the process. Okay, the process and maybe the ending of the class. Yeah? So in her speaking stage, she's thinking about making students to look at the dialogue presented in class and they have to change some of the parts of the conversation. After the students change these parts, they need to practice and memorize it. Once they are ready, they will call the teacher to check their conversation. So this is one kind of reading, okay? But in this case, the technique is called sus substitution reading. Why? Because they are just changing some parts of the conversation. Maybe they are changing just names. Maybe they are changing places. Maybe they are changing times. So they are just changing one part, some parts of the conversation. But the structure is going to be the same. Yes, some part of the information that you have in the conversation will be different. Okay? In that case, it is called substitution drilling because you change just parts of the conversation. Okay? Any questions about the example of drilling activities? No questions? Okay. So if you don't have any questions now, it's your turn. I want to see how you can find a solution for any situation that maybe you will find in the exam. Because remember that in the national exam that you are going to take, you are going to have different situations and sometimes you need to find solutions for those situations. Okay? So let's go to the next slide. And here, let's help our colleague. Drilling techniques. Okay, I'm going to read the situation to you, and you will tell me some possible solutions for this situation or for this case. Okay? So, Luz is an English teacher of the first grade high school. She presents a topic by using 
uh, a dialogue, yes, titled, how do I get to, giving directions. She doesn't know how to make her students practice the conversation presented in class. What should she do and what kind of drilling is the best option for this activity? Mm -hmm. So you need to find the, the suitable drilling technique for the activity that she wants to do in her lesson plan. So read the situation, please. I'm going to give you maybe a minute to think about that and tell me some possible solutions, okay? Remember that you have to mention the correct or the most appropriate drilling for this activity. Okay, go ahead, please. Do it. Any ideas? Read the situation carefully. Okay, remember that here, um, what I want you to tell me is the kind of drilling that she can apply in her lesson. Okay, remember that we have different kind of drillings. We have repetition drilling, we have substitution drilling, we have choral drilling, we have open pair drilling. Maybe chain, chain maybe, chain drilling. Okay, chain drilling is possible, but remember here, practice the conversation presented in class. Okay, yeah. So chain, and how can you do it by using the chain drill? What kind of activities? How, how would you start the lesson in this part? Or how do you start this activity? What will you say? Mm -hmm. Repetition real, yes, that's a good one. So maybe the teacher is going to ask, okay, students, repeat after me, blah, 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 and the students will say blah, blah, blah. Okay, so they are practicing, yeah, this is a good way, yes. This is the most, you know, the most common way that you, we usually use. Substitution really, excellent, this is another one. Remember that there are different possibilities, but I think that substitution really is a good way because you make the students think and they are going to change some parts of the conversation. So oh, definitely that conversation will be very meaningful to them because they are going to use maybe some places or maybe some verbs that they know so they will feel better doing that. Okay? Very nice. So maybe you can, I think that repetition drill is a good way, but I consider that substitution drilling is better in terms of practicing, okay? So if you see that your students have problems with pronunciation, so maybe you can apply the repetition drill in order to correct those, those mistakes. But if they don't have problems with pronunciation, so maybe you can apply as a substitution really, which is better. Okay? Very nice. So let's go to the next part. I don't remember kind of teacher. Please, can you repeat? Okay, Roxana, remember there are plenty of drillings. Okay? There are different kind of drillings. Some of the drillings that I was telling you was the choral drilling I'm writing now that you make the students repeat after you all together. The other one is open pair drilling. So in this case, you make the students to ask a question and the other student is going to answer. Okay? The other way is repetition. 
reading. Remember that you ask the students to repeat maybe parts of the conversation or maybe you can ask to repeat after you. Okay? So another one is substitution drilling. So what does it mean? Here you have a conversation, so you make them change to change some parts of the conversation, but they have but the conversation has to be the same. I mean the, the structure needs to be the same. The other one is transformation drilling. So in this case, the students are able to transform the sentence that you said before. Maybe if you use a positive, they can use negative. Or maybe if you say A, they will say B. So they are going to change. All right? Yes? They are some of the most common kinds of dreams that you can find. Yes, but remember, it's similar to repetition drilling, but the difference is that when you ask all the students to repeat chorally, so in that case it's choral drilling, but if you ask to repeat maybe just one student, okay, or two students, in that case that is repetition drilling, but of course they are quite the same, yes? Okay, very nice. So, if you don't have any questions, let's go to the next technique. No problem, Roxana. We are here to help you. So, the next one, students, um, is the information. Right. I'm sorry. I forgot the expansion missing. So, remember that, yes. Very good, Erika. You were very attentive. Thank you. I forgot. <laughs> so, expan expansion means, remember that when you um, increase different phrases, so you make the students to um, to remember more phrases, not only one sentence, maybe two sentences and more. So in that case, you are making students to, um, to remember or to retain information in their minds about the things that you mentioned before. So that's expansion, to make students repeat not only one sentence. Little by little, you can increase, right? Um, I will say that part in Spanish. Um, los encargados de, del manejo de la plataforma virtual están subiendo por día todos los videos, ok, después de las conferencias y todo el material necesario, ok. Ya, ya están los tres primeros videos, ok, que fue con el profesor Andy Pulache y bueno, en estos días ya va a estar subiendo el video Ok, mañana se sube el video 4 y el día lunes a más tardar estaría el siguiente video, que es el de, el de día de hoy. Ok, pero ustedes tienen también acceso a revisar todo el material, eh, diapositivas, el material de lectura e inclusive los exámenes van a estar en línea de cada sesión. Van a estar las dos semanas abiertas para que ustedes puedan realizarlo y practicar. ¿Sí? Okay, so now let's continue because we need to continue talking about the techniques that you can use in the while speaking stage. Okay, no problem, Rosa. So the next one is information gap. Teacher Ernesto, what information gap is? Do you have any ideas about information gap? What is a gap? Do you know anything? <laughs> No problem, teacher is graduado. Do you have any questions about, sorry, do you know what information gap means? Okay, a blank, a space, something that is missing. So, missing information, right? Yes? Okay, so let's read this part. Here it says that information gap, students, is an activity where learners are missing the information they need to complete a task and need to talk to each other to find it. Okay, gap means space. Something that is missing. Okay, that's the meaning of gap. So it means, in other words, it means that student A is going to have 
some information that a student B doesn't, and vice versa. A student B is, is going to have the information that a student A doesn't have. So it means that they need to talk to each other in order to complete the information that is missing. Okay? So that's the meaning of information gap. So the information is divided. One part of the information the student A has and the other part student B has. So what do they need to do? They need to talk in order to find the missing information, the information that they need. Okay, yes, by using questions, uh -huh, most of the time, it's like this. Then I, I will show you some examples, okay, of information gap. Okay, let me continue, please. Here it, it also says they provide an opportunity for extending speaking practice. They represent real communication, of course, because you will ask questions to a, another person. Okay, the next one, motivation can be high and they require sub skills such as clarifying meaning and rephrasing. Yes, because sometimes uh, maybe when a student A asks a question and you don't understand, so you can ask the student to repeat the question. So in that case, you are using clarifying meaning, right? Or rephrasing, maybe when you don't understand the question, so you can ask the other to repeat the question maybe using other words, right? Okay, let me show you here, students, one example of information gaps. So as you can see, a student A has some part of the information. Yes, but most of the time the teacher is going to give them a piece of paper with some information that is missing. So they will need to ask questions to his or her friend in order to complete that information. For example, look at this information that I'm showing now. So a student A has some of the charts completed. So in this case, we have country, capital, population, area, and industries. Okay? But a student B doesn't have the information that a student A has. So what do they have to do? They need to ask each other to complete the missing information that you need. So the only way here is not to see what the student has. What you have to do is to speak. You have to ask questions in order to complete the missing information. Right? So that's an example of information gap activities. Yes, do you understand how this technique works? Do you have any questions? Um, gap activities can be used most of the time in the listening and speaking part. Yeah, I think it's the best way. Yeah, and it's a good game, definitely. I think that I think that um, gap activities are more for the speaking and listening activities because if you ask the students to sit together and to see each other and they just complete, so the students are not developing any skill. They are just reading, you know, and they are just completing. So it's better to ask questions. So they need to force themselves to speak. So I think that gap information gap is very important for listening because they need to listen what the other person says, and of course for speaking, for sure. Okay, so if you don't have more questions, let's go to um, the next part. And here let me show you a situation. Jorge has a problem, so let's see what his problem is. And we need to find a solution, right? So here it says, Pedro is an English teacher of the fifth grade in high school. He would like to make students practice questions and answers about preferences. How can he do? Could you help him? What does he need to bring to class 
in order to make his students practice questions and answers about preferences, definitely by using information gap activities. So, how can he do it? Can you give me some ideas, please? Do you have any ideas about how he can present or how he can make his material based on information gap activities? No questions? Okay, maybe he can make a chart, yes, with some questions, or maybe the questions cannot be complete, just maybe some words, and they have to make the question to complete uh, his or her partner's answers, right? And of course, that this is the information that the student A will have, and a student B, is, uh, maybe they will have another questions and they can ask questions each other and they are going to write the answers, right? This is another way. So you see, so this is information that activities. Yeah, to complete the chart, but remember most of the time, so is I recommend you to use information gap activities in speaking part. It works in a lot because you make students to speak as much as they can in order to get the information. It is not easy at the beginning, but if you practice with them, so little by little, they will do it better. Use handout about the topic. Yes, okay, but remember that the, the objective or the, the aim for him is to make the students speak. So an information gap, maybe they need papers and they need to talk to each other in order to complete the papers. Okay, that's information that they need to get information from, okay, completing a dialogue as well, maybe an incomplete dialogue and they have to complete, okay, yes, but remember they are not going to see each other, they are not going to see the papers together, they need to see the paper just by, by him or herself, yes, okay, very good, so at least you have the idea, right, excellent, good job. Okay, so now let's go. Okay, interchange role is possible as well, right? So another important technique or way to um, present or to make a speaking activity in class is role plays. This is another very interesting kind of activity that you can use in your lessons, especially when you want to develop speaking activities, right? So the role play is a way of bringing the students from real life into the classroom. Yes, because they are going to, you know, they are going to work in pairs or in groups and they are going to take a role. So maybe one person is going to be the teacher or the waiter, right? Or the customer or the secretary and the other is going to be another person, right? So and they are going to start talking about a situation, a real situation. So the learning in this case is going to be more meaningful for them. Okay? Another important thing to use role plays is because they help to prepare students for real life communication. Definitely, because they are going to use real life communication words. Words that are very common in the situations that they have to face by simula simulating reality, because it's something that is possible. Okay, another thing that is very important to note is that role plays allow students to express who they are, their sense of humor, and the way that they communicate, right? So let's see. So role play, remember, is when the students take a role of any person what do you mean um, by that teacher is grabado? 
Where can you find more exercises about role plays or exercises about gap information gap activities? What do you mean by that? Okay, so while teacher Iska Rado is writing, let's continue with the examples of role plays, okay? So Edison wants to use a role play activity in his lesson. The topic is title, giving advice and suggestions. His students are from the third grade of high school. He wants to make them work together and create a conversation by following the previous conversation shown in class. Student A has some problems and the student B has to give some advice. Right? And suggestions by using the right use of should. So in this case, the students are going to take two different roles. One student is going to be the patient, okay, something like that. Yes, or maybe the friend. Right? And the other student is going to be um, maybe the other friend or maybe the doctor, right? So maybe they can talk or maybe they, they are in the park. So they will talk about one student is going to mention any problem that he has. And the other is going to give some advice or suggestions. But of course, using, in this case, should. Okay? So in that case, the students are you know, are talking naturally topics that are in the real life because you remember that illnesses is a topic that you can talk anytime with your friends or with somebody else. And of course, most of the time we usually give advice. So the information, the, the situation is real. It's something that they will face in the future. Okay? So in the next part, let me introduce Ruby. Ruby has a problem. What's her problem? Let's see. Ruby is an English teacher of the second grade high school. She wants to include a role play activity in her lesson that is about what are you doing now. She doesn't know how to include the role play activity in her lesson plan for the while speaking stage. Could you help her? How do you think is the best idea for her to continue with the lesson by taking into account the use of role play? So remember, she, she wants to use a role play activity in her lesson. And her topic for that class is, what are you doing now? So students, now please tell me, um, what, how can she start the speaking activity by using role play. How? Tell me please. What does she need to do in order to do that? Do you have any ideas about this part? Okay, yeah, but I, I mean the situation. What I mean is not how you can introduce that part. I mean, uh, the topic is what are you doing now? How can you make students do a role play? What, do, what, do you, what can you present to, in class to them? Maybe you can present a conversation, right, about two friends. Um, they are talking, you know, maybe they are just talking on the phone, and maybe one friend, yes, a dialogue, definitely. One friend is asking the other what he or she's doing, yes? Conversation between friends. Okay, so of course you need to present a dialogue with that information, and after you present the dialogue, and after you make the students repeat after you or maybe in pairs, you have to make the students to work together and they have maybe to create a similar dialogue, okay, by using their own words, all right? 
So in that case, one student is going to be the friend who is calling the other, and they are going to start talking about, in this case, what they are doing at that moment. Okay, remember that we are, in this case the use is present continuous. So they need to tell each other what they are doing at that time. Yes? Yeah, maybe you can make a group of two. Okay, one student is calling the other and they are going to start asking questions. Hello, Maria. How are you? What are you doing? And maybe Maria is going to say, Hi, Peter. I'm fine. I'm just here watching TV. What about you? Uh, I'm, I'm just listening to music, you know? This is the best way to make a role play activity, okay? And remember that the students love talking, so that's a good way, right? Okay, so one of the last techniques that you can use in the while speaking part, that is simulations. Aha, uh -huh, teacher. So you mentioned role play and now you mentioned simulations. So what is the difference? Or maybe simulations is part of a role play activity or they are totally different. What do you think the difference between them is? What is the big difference uh, between role play and simulations? Do you have any idea? Hello, Diana Carolina Ventura. Nice to see you here online. So do you have any questions? Do you have any idea about the difference between role play and simulations? Hello, Diana. Do you have any questions? Do you know, do you know the difference? No? OK. No problem. I will help you with that. Remember that simulation is a kind of role play, definitely. But what is the difference? Here is, I think that simulations is more meaningful than just role play. Because in simulations, they need to prepare not only the speech that they will say, also they need to prepare the, the scenery. For example, if you want to ask your students, to simulate, okay, a conversation in the restaurant. It means that they are going to maybe dress, okay, clothe as a waiter, and maybe the others, like the customers with their suit, you know, and they need to bring some realias like plates, you know, a table, they need to decorate the place. So in that case, they are not just doing a role play because a role play is maybe it's a quick activity. They are doing just at that moment when you are in class. But simulation is more meaningful. They need more work because they need to prepare the scenery in order to do the role play. So that's simulation. Simulation means when you prepare not only your speech, but also the scenery. You decorate a place according to the situation that you are going to simulate, okay? So here, let me tell you something about this. A simulation is a highly developed role play, almost a mini play. So in simulations, the students may have to perform a variety of speeches and activities. Here there is the example. For example, my students have to present a simulation of going to the doctor. That's the situation. So this involves setting up a waiting room. So they have to decorate a waiting room, a receptionist desk, and a, you know, and a examination room. It's a kind, yeah, it's a kind of plane, you know, but it's a mini one. So it's not a big one because when you are talking about, you know, a play, it requires a lot of time. So here is Yes, maybe they, for next class, they have to bring all the things that they need for the simulation, 
okay, maybe they have to dress with the appropriate clothes for the situation. That's the difference, okay, Merlin? So as I was telling you uh, about this situation of going to the doctor, you have to prepare, okay, the waiting room where the patient, one of the students is going to be the patient and he or she has to wait for the calling to visit the doctor, right? Then you have the receptionist desk and finally the examination room where the doctor will be, right? Still students checking with the receptionist a spain time in the you know in the waiting area and are called one by one to see the doctor who proceeds here with an examination and at the end of course the result what's the what the problem is yes a role play is a conversation floor but the difference is that in the role play, in the conversation, in the normal conversation, the students are going to be free. They want to be whoever they want. But in a role play, they have a role. For example, maybe one is the customer and one is the waiter. They are in the restaurant. So you give the roles to the students. So they have to talk according to the role that they have. So that's the difference. Yes, they have to perform the dialogue. Definitely, they have to perform the dialogue. But remember that they have to perform the dialogue according to the role that they have in that situation. Yes? Okay. So, let's... Okay, no problem. Oh, very nice. So, here, let's talk about... Let's... Let me introduce Renzo, okay? Renzo has a serious problem about si simulation activities. Maybe he, he doesn't understand very well the topic. So now you are the experts, okay? And you are going to help him how to solve this situation, all right? So here it says, Renzo is an English teacher of the second grade, high school. He wants to have a simulation activity with the topic called at the restaurant. He doesn't know how to include the simulation activity in his lesson plan. Could you help him? How do you think is the best idea for him to include simulation in the lesson? Remember, the topic is at the restaurant. So what does he need to ask the students to do? Very good, Janet. That's a good that's a good answer. But remember that they just they don't need just to prepare the dialogue, the words that they are going to say. They need to prepare the scenery. So maybe they need to prepare the park, okay? And they need to prepare the restaurant with you know with the table, with the forks, with the plates, with the glasses, okay? And they have to wear you know, the clothes, if you are the waiter, they have to have something, right? Very good. Yes, you see? That's simulation, because it's not here just a conversation. Um, Erica, I don't think that they need to have a lot of English. So for simulation activities, it means that you have to prepare before, I mean, you have to present the topic first. So it means that they have enough vocabulary, okay, for the situation. So simulation is going to help you to improve, okay, what the students know. But of course, you need to teach them first, all right? So you can use puppets, okay, as a role play activity. For sure, you can do it, okay? You can do it in that case. But you remember that 14 years they don't like puppets when you are working with children, so I think it's easier, right? Okay. So students, and to finish our class, okay, last time my students worked with a mini theater with all the materials. It's a good activity. Yes, definitely, it's a good activity. 
of puppets. Puppets means they are small toys where you can put your hand, okay, inside inside them, and you can make them talk. But of course, you are using your voice. Remember that if they don't have the right pronunciation, you have to make repeat as many times as possible. Because if you don't make a student repeat, even though you know that they have a lot of problems, they won't improve it. So you need to practice as much as you can. So if they have problems, make them to repeat many times. Okay, Rosa, remember that role pace is when just they take roles and they speak. They don't prepare the scenery. But simulation is, is a difficult work because they have to prepare the scenery and also they have to prepare the conversation for the scenery. That's the difference. Okay, students, any other question before going to um, the last one? Okay, um, the last one is a very short slide. So this is very important to know, okay, what the role of a teacher in the classroom interaction is. Remember that when you have interactive classes, so the role of the teacher is different because remember that nowadays we have to make our students to work in class. We don't have to give everything to them. We can help them, but they have to do their part as well. So the role of the teacher vary according to the activities that you are performing. So for example, if the students are working in a conversation, so you can be close to them to help when needed. So your role in that case is just a facilitator person. You are a facilitator because you can help when they need. All right? Another role that you can do in class, especially for interactive classes, you can create a classroom environment, definitely. So when they start working in groups, you know, the students feel more comfortable. So if, you, if they see you uh, maybe walking around the classroom, so it means that they are going to feel good, you know, because you will maybe transmit the, you know, you transmit the, the feeling that you are feeling happy in that time, so they will feel good, right? And the other one is role model. So remember that most of the times we are a model for them. So it means that they are going to repeat almost everything that you say. So you need to repeat in a good way the correct pronunciation and they will repeat the same. And of course, mentor, mentor means that you are going to evaluate, that you are going to tell them that if they have mistakes, how they can correct. If they do something that is not correct, how they can do it correctly. So that's mentor in this case, all right? So here there are some of the roles of the teachers in the classroom interaction, okay? So do you have any questions before finishing our class for today? Because it's almost 9.20 and unfortunately the class is over for tonight. So if you have any questions about the things that we were doing, Okay, remember that mentor, mentor is when you, um, when you are like a guide, you know, you are going to help them. Um, maybe if they have problems, you will let, let them know what problems they have, and you are going to find a solution for the problems that they have. Okay, in that case, you guide them to correct their own problems. Okay, that's mentor. You are there to help them, okay, to correct any possible mistake. And it's different between mentor and facilitator because facilitator, facilitator means that you are going to help them. Maybe they need, teacher, how do you say that word? Okay, so you can help them, okay? That's it. But mentor is when you um, correct the last work 
and you can give them different ideas to make it better. Right, Erica? Okay, students, do you have any questions before finishing our session for today? Do you have any questions about the things that we were talking during the during the hour and some minutes? Okay, Merli, uh, I will remember that. Okay, Janet, very nice. Thank you. Puppets. Okay, puppets. Remember that in Spanish we say títeres. Yes. Y respondiendo a la pregunta de Merli, como les dije, eh, los exámenes se van a subir todos los exámenes y van a estar abiertos las dos semanas del curso para que ustedes lo puedan desarrollar en cualquier momento. Si no está el examen 4, ya posiblemente mañana lo encuentren ahí. Ok, chicos. Eh, well, that's all for today. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, please try to read the information that you have there. Try to practice the cases, okay? So on Monday, you will have classes with Mr. Johnny Vasquez. So you are going to have Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday classes with him. So you are going to talk, he's going, sorry, he's going to talk about uh, listening and writing part. And on Thursday and Friday, we will see you again. Definitely. So if you need any help, you can write to me. Okay. Here I'm going to put my email. Oh, sorry, there is a mistake. One moment. Okay, Saturdays we don't have classes floor because on Saturdays maybe you are going to read the information and you are going to um, do the exams online. So we are going to have classes just from Monday to Friday. Okay, but if you have any questions or if you did any help, please you, you feel free to write to me and I will be very glad to answer all your doubts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. So if you don't have any questions, so thank you very much for your time and see you, okay, with me, see you on Thursday for grammar and vocabulary and on Monday, Mr. Vasquez is going to start with his classes, okay? Thank you, Merli. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you for your time, Anna, Celso, Diana. Hello again and bye. Erika, Flor, Janet, Javier, Jose Luis, Lydia, Lucia, Merli, Roxana, and teacher Iska. It was a pleasure to be with you and see you next week. Okay? Bye bye. Have a good night. And remember, study. Bye bye. See you. <laughs>